Hi, I'm Mr. Richmond, and this is your Math 2 Unit 2.5 Lesson Summary. This is our last unit in Chapter 2. We've got a test coming up here. Um, in this lesson, we're going to be introduced to converses. Uh, a converse is, and we'll deal with it mainly with conditional statements, uh, the converse conditional statement is written in the form if P then Q. Uh, or sorry, if it's written in the form if P then Q, the converse is the statement if Q then P. It's pretty much reversing it. So if you think of it reversing, the conclusion becomes the hypothesis, and the hypothesis becomes the conclusion. Uh, and in the previous section, we dealt with alternate uh, parallel lines intersected by uh, a transversal. Sorry about that. Parallel lines intersected by a transversal, um, and found all these uh, theorems that proved different angle measures are congruent when the lines are parallel. Well, in a converse, then we would reverse that and say, well, if the angles are congruent, the lines must be parallel. So we're going to completely reverse it. And that's what the corresponding angles converse postulate is. It's a complete reverse of the corresponding angles postulate. It states, if two lines intersected by a transversal form congruent corresponding angles, then the lines are parallel. So if in this diagram I can see that these two corresponding angles are the same, I know that lines A and B must be parallel. And that's what we'll be doing proof-wise, is proving lines are parallel via this. Uh, now, because of uh, this rule, there are a lot of other converses that then arise from it. Uh, the alternate interior angles con uh, converse, which is if the alternate interior angles are congruent, the lines must be parallel. If the exterior angles are congruent, uh, alternate exterior angles are congruent, the lines must be parallel. Uh, same side interior angles, if the same side interior angles are supplementary, then uh, they must be uh, parallel, and the same side exterior. Um, show you a paragraph or a uh, flow proof. Um, so I'm going to start by brainstorming and then I'll, I'll make my formal proof. So I'm always going to label as I go along, it's real important. So I know the measure of angle 1 is uh, 80 degrees, I know the measure of angle 6 is 100 degrees. Um, if I can somehow get some corresponding angles to be congruent, I'd be good. So I could potentially if I can prove 5 is 80 degrees, I could do the corresponding angles converse. I could find that 5 is 80 doing a linear pair, so that's actually pretty easy. I could also do show 1 and 2 are a linear pair, and that gives me 6. Or, sorry, it gives me 2 at being 100, and shows that the corresponding angles. Um, if I was allowed to do some of these other converse, or if that was acceptable, I could um, do alternate interior angles. If I can show angle 4 is congruent to angle 6, then they would be able to say they're parallel. And I could get 4 by again doing a linear pair. So it's seeming like everything's just going to stem off the fact that I have the linear pair postulate giving me one extra measure, and then that's showing that the corresponding angles are congruent, therefore they're parallel. So pretty straightforward uh, proof. So I'm going to say measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equal 180. And that's a linear pair postulate. That'll kind of get me started. I know the measure of angle 1 is 80 degrees. So I can use that to figure out the measure of angle 2. That gives me that the measure of angle 2 is 100 degrees. And I know the measure of angle 6 is 100 degrees. So I know that angle 2 is congruent to angle 6. And those are in corresponding uh, positions, so I can then from there use the corresponding angles converse postulate. So pretty straightforward pathway to it. Now I just have to justify it with reasoning. So um, I'll try to show a flowchart proof. So I'm going to do our givens first. So the me uh, measure of angle 1 equals 80 degrees, um, and that is our given. So I'm going to write the reason under the box. Um, I also know the measure of angle 6 equals 100 degrees. And that's a given for us. Now on a flowchart proof, I try to show which things I'm using in the next statement if, if it's possible. If it's, own, if it's its own kind of uh, deal, then I can do a separate box for it. So from there, I wanted to say measure angle 1 plus measure angle 2 equals 180 degrees. Um, so let's go measure of angle 1 plus the measure angle 2 equals 180 degrees. And I know that because of the linear pair postulate. 
That was its own idea. Didn't really need anything else for that. Um, then from there, I substituted into it 80 degrees so I could find a measure of angle 2. So I said 80 degrees plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180 degrees. And I knew that doing the substitution property. And I was able to do the substitution property using two things. I took the 80 and substituted it into the linear pair posture. So I used these two ideas to create this. So that's where I start to need to branch it with arrows, showing my reasoning, like how I came up to that. Okay. Now from there, um, I solved it and I said the measure of angle 2 equals 100 degrees and that was via the subtraction property. Okay, and really that just stems off this one, solving it out. So I only needed the one rule above it. And then from there, um, I know that the measure of angle 6 is 100 and the measure of angle 2 is 100. It means they have the same measure. I now know angle 2 is congruent to angle 6. And that's really just the definition of congruence. When two measures share the same length, they must be congruent. And for that to happen, I had to know that angle 2 was 100 degrees and that angle 6 was 100 degrees. Now, if I was trying to be real neat, I'd probably want to go put this guy down here, but I'm already started, so I'm just going to stem that. And you can see why I'm not a big flowchart proof guy. I think all over the place, so i got to draw these arrows everywhere. But I still get the idea of uh, how the ideas are coming together to create that reason. And then lastly, if angle 2 is going to angle 6, then that lets me know that A is indeed parallel to B because of the corresponding angles converse. So I was really just trying to find two sets of corresponding, or a, a pair of corresponding angles that were congruent. And that just stemmed off this one idea. And so there we go. And so what's nice about a flowchart proof uh, is that it, it does help you kind of see and the reader see what ideas are leading to the next. So I had my givens, I put my reason in there, and some well, teachers will write the uh, rule in there. I think the book writes the rule in there. I just, I've never really liked that, so I'd kind of do a little differently. Uh, but it's showing what I'm using to get to my next thing. So I had the two givens and this general postulate statement which then, by taking those two and putting those two thoughts together, I created this statement using the substitution property. This one idea led down to a more simplified version using the substitution uh, or subtraction property. Then, knowing angle 2 is 100 and knowing angle 6 is 100 allowed me to create the idea that they must be congruent. So those two ideas stem together here, and then that last statement leads to me eventually saying they're parallel. Um, so hopefully that helps you helps you out with how to do a flowchart proof. Uh, if it was a paragraph proof, it's it's very similar in the fact that of what I did here is just in a complete sentence, something along the lines of you know we're given that blah 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 blah. Um, so I also know the measure angle one plus measure angle two equals 180 by the linear pair postulate, and it's me just stating this in a written form. Um, from there, I can then say 80 degrees plus measuring on 2 is 180 degrees because of the substitution property. So if that's more your style of thinking is you can kind of just tell the story of the process and you're very good at explaining your reasoning, a paragraph proof works well um, too. But me personally, I think between the two, I would choose the flowchart, your call, um, but here it is demoed um, and good luck.